Welcome back, everyone. And thanks for coming, gentlemen. It's a big group. We have a lot to get through. Good morrow, neighbor Baptista. Good morrow, Senor Gremio. And God save you, gentlemen. Oh, no, we can skip the greetings. <laughs> I'll just do some quick introductions and remind our audience who we have in the studio. And God save you, uh, good sir. You're the one who has the daughter called Katerina. Or we could ignore my plans for the interview and dive right in. Katerina, uh, the one who's fair and virtuous. I have a daughter called Katerina. You're being too blunt. There's a way to go about these things. I can handle this. Who is this guy? I was going to get to that. Oh, I'm a gentleman of Verona, sir, and after hearing of your daughter's beauty and her wit, her affability and her bashful modesty, and her mild behavior, that's why I'm being so bold in introducing myself within your house. Because I want to bear witness to all of those things I've heard. And, as a little entrance fee, <laughs> I've brought my man here, who is a tutor of music and mathematics and uh, the sciences, uh, and he can... In I want to emphasize his skills in music uh, once more, and I don't mean to insist that your daughter is ignorant in these things, certainly, but I'm sure he could have a thing or two to teach her. His name is Licio, from Mantua. Well, <clears throat> you are welcome, sir, as is your friend here. But as for my daughter, Catherine, I can tell you with the greatest confidence that she wouldn't be a good match for you, unfortunately for me. Well, either you don't wish to have your daughter married off, or you already don't like me oh. for some reason. Don't misunderstand me, I'm just telling it like it is. But where are you from, anyway? What is your name? Petruccio's my name. Antonio's my father. A man well known throughout all of Italy. I know him well. Antonio's son is certainly welcome in my household. But enough about you, Petruccio. Let us poor petitioners have a chance, too. You should back off a little bit. You're being too pushy. Pardon me, Signor Gremio. I'm just anxious to start wooing. I'm sure you are, but when you meet Katerina, it's cursing that you will be doing. <laughs> but what a wonderful gift you're presenting to Baptista. I have brought you a present as well, my neighbor, since you've been so kind to me. I freely present to you this young scholar, that has been studying at Reims for uh, quite a long time, uh, as skilled in Greek, Latin, and other languages as the other is in <laughs> music and mathematics. His name is Cambio. I pray that you will accept his service. A thousand thanks, Signor Gremio, and welcome, good Cambio. And I guess that just leaves you, gentle sir. I don't think I've seen you round here before. Yes, well, if you had let me get through the introductions, we would have gotten to that part. Oh, sorry, Sophia. But if I could be so bold as to ask why you're here. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I've been the one who's been too bold. I'm a stranger in the city, just showing up like this. But I'd like to make myself a suitor to your daughter, to fair and virtuous Bianca. Now, I know you want Bianca's older sister to be courted first, so I'm only asking that, you know, when you get to know a little more about me, I would be welcome to join Bianca's suitors and have as much free access as the rest when the time comes. Now, for the education of your daughters, I've brought a little gift, some Greek and Latin books. It's only a small token, but if you accept them, then their worth is great. Lucentio is your name. Where are you from? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> Where are you from? From Pisa. I'm Vincentio's son. Vincentio? A mighty man of Pisa, from what I've heard. I know his name well. Well, let's not waste any time then. You can get a loot from the house and you take this set of books. You shall go tutor my daughters directly. Oh, sorry, if that's okay, Sophia. Uh, sure, it's your story. Although, are you sure you don't want to ask these tutors more about their qualifications before you have them instructing your daughters? Maybe check their credentials, get some identification? 
Oh, no, 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 no. Don't be silly. You are clearly not from around here. <laughs> These tutors have been offered up on the recommendation of my very good friends and neighbours. Therefore, I trust them with my life. So, off you go, schoolmasters, and teach my daughters well. And why don't the rest of us go for a little walk in the garden? And then we can have some lunch. You're all welcome, and I hope you make yourselves at home. You should come too, Sophia. Oh, well, I... Senor Baptista, if I could just take a minute more of your time. I'm quite busy, and I can't come to do this wooing thing every day. And exactly why is that? Why don't you have time for this wooing thing? Do you mind? Uh, you knew my father well, and I was the sole heir to all of his lands and money, and I've increased that wealth since I've become head of the household. So, uh, given all of that, and assuming I get your daughter's love, what dowry will come with her? If I could just interject here, because it went by very quickly, I just want to say I'm really relieved to hear you say, assuming I get your daughter's love. The way you guys talk, it sounds like it's all about money. So, how much is a dowry? 20,000 crowns when you're married, and half of my lands when I'm dead. 20,000 crowns, is that a lot? Oh, it's a lot. It's, what's a currency where you're from, Sophia? Oh, well, we use dollars, but I don't uh, think you guys uh, are. We know dollars, we're businessmen. So, a crown is about, what, a uh, hundred dollars, yeah. give or take? And 20,000 crowns, so that Two would million be... dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh my. <laughs> as soon as they're married. And for that dowry, I will guarantee in the marriage contract that she will get all of my money and property should I die before she does. Boy, when you guys say marriage contract, you really mean contract. Yeah, so we should go ahead and draw up those documents with those exact specifications in triplicate? Uh, we can certainly do that once that particular specification is accomplished. That is her love. That's what I like to hear. Because that's the most important thing. That is the most important thing. <laughs> that's going to be easy. <laughs> For I tell you, Father, I am as determined as she is stubborn. You're calling him Father already. It would be like two raging fires that when they come together, they consume the thing that feeds their fury. Wait, if there's two raging fires, it sounds like you're saying that you and Katerina are very similar. And you said feeds their fury. Are you saying that you're kind of an angry guy too? Because I haven't necessarily picked up on that yet. I mean, you mostly just seem really fixated on money. And, thank you, even though a small wind can blow a little fire and make it bigger, a giant wind blows out the fire and all. So I to her, and so she yields to me. I'm sorry, I think you're mixing your metaphors. You just said you were both raging fires. And now it sounds like you're saying you're a big wind that will blow her little fire out. The point is, Sophia, my friend, <laughs> I am rough and woo not like a babe. Good luck with that. That's it? Good luck with that? Uh, you're not worried by what he means by I am rough? Because I am. I think Catherine can handle herself. I suppose you have a point there. And you should be ready for some rough words from her. I'm pretty tough, like a mountain in the wind, no matter how strong the wind blows. My dear friend, you look pale. That must be what fear looks like. Uh, do you think my daughter will make a good musician? Oh, I think she'll make a good soldier. She can't really hold a lute, but she can hold a weapon. You couldn't break her in, hmm? Huh? Nope. She broke the loot on me, though. Oh, dear. How'd that happen? And I was just telling her that her fingers weren't in the right place from the frets. And so I curved her hand a little to get them right. And then suddenly she got all impatient. Oh, you call these frets? Then I'll fume with them. And then she hit me over the head. <laughs> That's kind of clever, actually. <laughs> I, I mean, get it? Frets are those things on the instrument that you put your fingers on. But fret also means to worry or get annoyed. So she was kind of making a joke, kind of. Mm. I wonder if she got mad that you were touching her hand. Mm, well, she put my head through the instrument with her little joke. Okay, that part's not funny. And then I just stood there amazed, my, my head sticking through the lute while she just called me rascal and fiddler and 
twangling Jack with 20 more insults on top of that, as if she prepared them in advance. That's going to cost me a new loot. How wonderfully full of life this young woman must be. Ugh, I love her 10 times more than I did already. <laughs> love her 10 times more? Are you saying that you've been falling in love with a woman based on everyone's description of her? Oh, I can't wait to meet her. Well, cheer up, Licio. I'll take you to my younger daughter. I think you'll find her a much more willing and appreciative student. Uh, Signor Petruccio, will you go with us or shall I send my daughter Kate to you? Mm, that'd be great. I'll just uh, wait for her here with Sophia. And woo her with some spirit when she comes, am I right? <laughs> I actually want to ask you more about that and I have some other questions too, but we need to give our audience a break. We'll be right back. Well, I hope it's not a long one. It won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> 